Welcome. Glad, I'm glad, glad you all are hard. joining us. <laughs> My name is Levi Sim. This is a photo focus webinar. We are talking about mirrorless cameras today, and we are talking about something very specific in mirrorless cameras, which uh, it applies to other cameras as well. But I'm glad to welcome my pal, Sharky James, Mike James. Uh, fellow Idahoan. The show, fellow Idahoan. I got rid of all the potatoes. That's right, he had, he had to clean out the, the potato cellar there. No one in Idaho, Idaho ever Idaho thinks stuff. of potatoes. Like, I can't remember the last time I saw a darn potato. I was driving and all of a sudden, bam, potato. So the, well, so I moved to potato country. You actually live in onion country. And the area around your house right now, Sharky, Saying I stink. produces like 7 billion onions a year. I think you're just making this stuff. I'm not right? making that. I saw it on the side of a, of a building where I suppose many of those alleged onions were housed. And mint. Most of the mint in the world comes from Nampa, Idaho. It's true. Really? Yeah, I'm not kidding. And yeah. there's some wineries there, too. I was like, dude, you, you go take a drive. How'd that happen? Oh, yeah, there's a few. <laughs> they, they got mixed up. They were like, yeah, I'm headed for Napa. Oh, yeah, I'll take you. <laughs> take or maybe you I'm to, thinking to Caldwell. The, the oh, wait, there's Valley. wineries there. The, the Nampa Valley. <laughs> Idaho. Everyone's moving here. That's no joke. That's for sure. That's for it is sure. like one of the fastest growing states. I'm thinking, what are we again? Are we a territory? Sometimes yeah, I it feels like that. I believe it's still the fastest growing state. Boise which, is crazy. Uh, I oh, allegedly yeah. took my drone up, the Mini 2, the other day, and wow, from like 30 feet, you can see downtown Boise. I'm like, I didn't know we moved that close. <laughs> it might be a little too close. No, Come on great. over here, man. There's room. John Goodman, you're from Idaho. What? That's right. Where in Idaho? Gooding. That's what he wrote right there. You didn't see Gooding, Idaho? See, now if I actually knew that Gooding was... <laughs> A fine town. If only you were this from fine Idaho state of ours. as well, Mike. If I ever got out of actual Boise, hey, I make it to Meridian every once in a while. That's right. Well, let's uh, let's uh, well, and and Sharky, as you as you know, is host of the Petapixel Photography Podcast, and a uh, uh, had a long career in photography, Photo as well as many other things, and. How long have you been using mirrorless cameras? That would go back to, well, I don't have it over here. It's on the other side. I bought a, and if you listen to my show, you might remember this. I bought a Sony A6000, a, the original A7S, the 7200 F4, and the incredible Zeiss F18. If you're ever going to do a video of yourself, by the way, don't use that lens. <laughs> you, will, you will find you will find all kinds of wrinkles you didn't realize you had. But I literally I got that, and the very next day after it arrived, I shot the Utah State football championship, you know, high school football, and uh, the A6000 impressed. I mean, I got this was so we've been here in Boise now for over five years. So this was like oh, six plus years or so ago. Mm -hmm. whatever it was and people other photojournalists were looking at me and snickering and i'd see all the side eyes right and i'm like i'm thinking i'm like they, they don't know it yet They're yeah all gonna be shooting mirrorless even a little bit in the next year or two mm -hmm. and i kept in contact with a bunch of them and they did yeah you know they end up getting the the gateway drug a6000 or <laughs> 6100 whatever at that point and then they and then they stepped up and things have come along. I mean, I remember back when I would listen to Frederick Van Johnson on TWIP back when I was in Arizona. So we're talking seven, eight years ago, talking about these little mirrorless, you know, it was the pen cameras, right? The little, right. The little the Olympus. pens, yeah. Olympus pens. And, uh, and I was thinking back then, I'm like, that's, you know, he's talking about all the benefits of those. I was like, this, as this matures, that's what I want. You know, as a photojournalist, I was a problem solver. You had to be a problem solver. Something gets thrown at you sometimes, literally, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, <and> hey, <laughs> throw some good stuff at me. Potato <laughs> and potato, whatever. And, you know, these things that were coming down the pike, I, I wanted those things. And it, but it was going to take a while to get there. And we are, we're there. We're more than there. 
You know, when I first started the show a little over five years ago, people were like, you're a Sony fanboy and mirrorless is, is just a fad. And I'm like, you're, you don't know. First of all, you don't have a podcast, buddy. Podcast. <laughs> that's right. I mean, Put you can go place. create one right that's now. <laughs> so that's not really so much of a big deal, but you know what you're talking about. And they all have mirrorless. Now, a bunch of people, I get emails and messages all the time. You used to talk about these mirrorless cameras and I was hardcore with my, you know, D700, which you're going to be hardcore with the DSLR. The D700 is the one. It's the one. It's the one. It's the one. Everything else, still the pointless. one. Pointless. I just bought one. Well, maybe the D850. <laughs> <laughs> See, you're, you'll buy more. Oh, like yeah, rabbits, yeah. and you start multiplying. And then, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we're, we're there. We're there with the, the mirrorless Absolutely. cameras. And, you know, the EVF is going to get better constantly. We're going to get I, a better I, frame. I, I don't have you're complaints. Gonna, I mean, I don't listen. I've got an XT2 and an XT3. Mm -hmm. The improvement was was noticeable, especially in your when you're in good light. Of course, you know the EVFs really shine. Ha ha, get it? Ha -ha. Shine. Dead yeah. joke number one. Maybe? <laughs> they're just fine. They're just fine. Yeah, and they're going to get to the point where the people that can notice the difference and the refresh rate and the re and the resolution might be a problem for them because it's not like they're you know looking through a lens. <sighs> bounced off a mirror a billion times well, and, into your eyeball and I'm, i mean like you're using you're using fujis i'm using lumixes which have been making mirrorless Still. cameras longer than fujis yeah i got no complaints with the evf in fact i love the thing Great. because i look in here and i see exactly what my picture looks like before i take the picture see that's what i love about it's mirrorless amazing. I keep telling like people, any other consideration you're... Any other consideration is yeah. under the table, under the carpet. If you were to gone. design a camera right now and you had the options, you wouldn't make a DSLR, especially no. if you wanted to sell cameras. No. Well, that's yeah. it, Ken. Being, for a, a person who's new to photography, being able to put that to your eye mm -hmm. or look at the LCD on the back and see what the, your image is going to be like and then go, yeah. okay, what happens when I when I When I turn this thing, this, this thing. is what happened. Yeah. That's cool. Right. <laughs> That's how it should be. And then from now on, that's how it's going to be. Absolutely. It's great. Amazing. It's exciting. It's so easy to teach people how to use cameras. <laughs> that's right. It really is. It's look, not hard look anymore. Look through the thingy and turn the knobby until it looks good. Yeah. That's it. Did you just see light go out? I'm in the garage. I got to fix that. I need like a, something that dances in front of this. I oh. put those, those, uh, <laughs> those Leviton, whatever, Lutron system, Caseta <laughs> system in there. And everything's like automated and stuff. You need, you need one of those, uh, the, the car sale guy, the airhead thingy. That That's what around. I need. <laughs> Giant green thing. It's like, That's use good. cars. <laughs> well, hey, uh, you know, Sharky, not, not only are you and I in Idaho, but this has never happened. We've got two other people from us. So we've got John. Keith is from Idaho. Uh, David's tuning in from Bismarck ND, equally Idahoish, and somebody's tuning in from uh, California. Some guy named Frederick FVJ. That's v himself. FVJ is in the house. Hi, FVJ. <laughs> Are you um, going to bring him in? Should I should I add Frederick as a as a panelist? Yeah, panelist status. Promote to panelist. Back Welcome to the show, a, Frederick. A little sharky. I, I mean, I mean, how could I not? Because because <laughs> anything I I do online, whether it's a webinar or a podcast or whatever, I still just remember myself walking to and from my studio every day as a new photographer, listening to the Twip Photography This Week in Photo, everything yeah. there. So how could I not welcome? Uh, All right, prepare, Frederick. One of my mentors. Frederick really knows. Frederick's the reason. I got into podcasting. I mean, That's I was right. given a, oh, yeah, a nudge by Paul Jerome. He's, I tell him all the time. I'm like, I said, Frederick, Frederick. I know Frederick a little bit. We don't keep in touch that much. We're both, you know, busy. He's way busier than I am. But we know each other Frederick. a lot. We've had we some deep conversations, Sharky. We know each other right. a lot. I know the towel right. story. We're just gonna right. the towel story. <laughs> Well, let's Don't not ask. talk about that. Let's go. <laughs> no. Frederick, Frederick and I have had some deep conversations. In fact, we talked about mental health. And I think the last time I was on, on Twip, it's been a few years. Yeah, I can't believe it's I'm, been a few I'm years. A you know, people still talk about that episode, you know? Yeah. So I, th I think it's time to do another one. I think so. I get messages all the time from people and they're like, bro, like, and if you follow me on Instagram, which is Len Shark everywhere, I talk openly about mental health because you should. Yep. Yeah, you, you bottle it up and you die. 
Don't do that. Unless unless oh. you're a disenfranchised royal, and then you don't talk about mental health, right, Sharky? <laughs> you already the election's <laughs> over, so we don't have to go jumping into that mess. Oh man. So what does he do? He brings <laughs> he goes way back. He's like way back to the royal family um, and that. Wow, oh, that was. And I, Levi, saw clips I love of that. that you brought that, that was... Lumix out. I've got mine, uh, mine always watching over got, my shoulder yeah. back there. <laughs> this one's this one's a GH5. I don't use this one right now myself. I use a G9 in my yep. personal work, but I use this one every day for the university. <laughs> what is that? This is the S8, the S1. Oh yeah, that's with my a, other with one. A grip. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, with, with the, the grip. grip on it, you right. just you. That's so. Basically, you got Thor's hammer right there. I it's like it's it. about right. It's almost. We were just saying it's almost as large as a D seven hundred with a grip. Yeah. <laughs> it's the yeah. permanent nerve damage that I have in my. That's right. In the beds of my arms. Don't. That's the thing. Nope. Just public service announcement. Take care of your arms. Take care of your body. And your back. Yeah. Go to yeah. go to. They Absolutely. told me how to. I'm like you know I've got permanent pain the rest of my life. They're like and I'm like how do, how do you how do you fix this? I went to a doctor. And they're like, well, well, we cut in there and then we unstring your nerves. And I was like, stop. You lost me at unstring. You're not unstringing nothing in there. And my doctor friends are like, don't let them unstring anything. Just Tylenol. Have you heard of Tylenol? Do that. There you go. Better living. <laughs> All right. So guys, we're going to talk about the little thingy inside there. Do you see that thingy reflecting stuff? Yes. The sensor. We're talking about sensor sizes is the does idea. size matter the good does size matter does size matter well and and we'll t- let's let's talk about like there's one look why at it that might one matter yeah there's the, there's the thingy too so, my sense is smaller than yours that, yeah, <laughs> absolutely absolutely they are uh, and that's that's where the picture's made that's that's where the picture's recorded absorbed. right there on that little thing is where that little, that the little magic wiper. happens that's the magic right there and they come in various sizes and various shapes, it turns out. Um, what, uh, where should we begin? Trapezoid. That's the way you were, you were let me, looking let me, for. Let me start it. by trapezoid. showing the picture. Tra- you know, trapezoid. You know what, Levi, you... I'm curious. I'm curious what you guys think of, because we've seen, because we, we, like, micro four thirds, right? So we love micro four thirds, and then we also love our full frames. And now Fuji has come out with their GFX 100S, <laughs> which is gigantic, but right. in, a, in a relatively small form factor. So I think the argument of mirrorless and small sensors means smaller camera bodies, not, some, not necessarily optics, but camera bodies, is losing weight now, right? So... You know, what, what do we do now? Now that we can't argue that, hey, I shoot mirrorless because I have, you know, tendonitis or a bad back and I need right? lighter bodies. It's not that anymore, right? It's not. Losing and, you know, weight for me, it, for me, that is was what never I want. Enough. Like, I, I love, well, and it's, it's also not true, right? I've got, yeah. I've got a camera here that is as big as the biggest DSLR <laughs> I've ever used. Yes. And, and it's a full frame <laughs> sensor which means it gets full frame lenses. These yeah, cannot yeah. be smaller. Yeah. The 85 millimeter lens, it requires 85 millimeters to focus. It's, yeah, in, in this you know, particular universe with our physics, that's what we got, that, right? That's the, yeah, and so the lie <laughs> of smaller and lighter is a lie. I, I wanna ask Frederick, cause like we were just talking before you came on Frederick about how back in the day, before I even moved to Utah and you know, subsequently Idaho, back when I was a photojournalist, I'd be on my assignments listening to you, Frederick, talk about, you know, your pen cameras and, and those things and where those were going. And would you agree that back in the day, the push for uh, selling people on mirrorless was the smaller and lighter yeah. kind of thing? Because that's what they could do. And then at, at, a, at a certain point, Sony was like, we'll make it a little bigger and just a little bigger. <laughs> and yeah. look how huge it is now, but it's a little bit lighter. You, you hit it right exactly right yeah Yeah, that it was those two arguments it was the the size of the thing and they're still beautiful like i have a bunch of micro four thirds cameras that i use all the time like like levi's my primary daily driver is the lumix g9 which is a micro four thirds camera but also full frame cameras as well i think the argument that that no longer holds water is that 
you know, you the the smaller sensor size in micro four thirds is good enough for everything. Therefore, you should eschew everything else the full frame, which was an argument that was made before Panasonic released full frame. So now we have a choice. We, can, <laughs> we, use, it too. we yeah. can use full frame. You when, stop talking about that. When it suits. No, it's the right tool for the right job. If all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail, right? right. So now right. we have a hammer. And if, and a saw. And, and if you only have a big nail, then you feel like you just need a bigger hammer. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I still think there's room for all these, but we were, we were actually having this conversation in an interview on TWIP a while back about, you know, the, and I say this being affiliated with Panasonic and Lumix as an ambassador. I was gonna ask you, are you still that. affiliated? Yes. I am. Yeah, I am yeah. happily. Uh, but I say, I, you know, the question, but I'm I'm the, the candid one because, you know, I do TWIP, right? So I talk about all sides. And my question from a consumer standpoint is, as much as I like my micro four thirds cameras and lenses and the light lightness or the weight, the, you know, the lower weight and all that, with the this was under this was under the shadow of Fuji releasing that 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 gigantic 100 megapixel six grand camera, full frame but still in a small a relatively small box. Incredibly Does this small. this mean yeah. Micro Four Thirds as a format is going away? Right? Is that mm -hmm. are we seeing are we seeing that kind of fade to black? Are the credits rolling, or is Micro Four Thirds? gonna be here for the duration but maybe shift its focus maybe more towards video or something i don't know so that's that's kind of where i'm going well here, here's a what i think with no insider information that's what i i think it's <laughs> things are going to start skewing in that direction here's here's my opinion on it it's either micro four thirds or medium format can you guys see on your screen right now this sensor size picture thing yeah i see it am i sure okay and there, there's the relative sizes of sensors like those are those are to scale next to each other there's just not that much difference yeah medium which format one is, is which one is your cell phone camera is that the far right one? so that one's, that one's not actually even on this one i've got a i've got another and, graphic that shows that one and more importantly and we've talked about i talked about on my show i'm sure frederick's talked about it no one can tell the difference most like right now i'm in front of an imac who gets home from work? Well, if they even go to work and then come back home and sits in front of a big computer, most of the, the consumption is on your smart device these days. Right. So it's smaller right. and really doesn't even matter anymore. Yeah, like until you what, get what do to I need medium a format, system? right? And, yeah, and oh. with, with Lightroom stitching panoramas and with my G9 doing a, a sensor shift high res picture up to what is it, 96 megapixels, something like this? Crazy. Yeah. I've mm -hmm. done the high res and I've done panoramas from the, it's an enormous photograph. <laughs> they're all tools yeah. in your toolbox. And they're all you consumed buy, on a at, website. Look at what Sony did, for instance. Sony came out with purpose driven cameras, which others really kind of didn't do so much. You had your low light A7S, you mm -hmm. had the, you know, you had your, uh, what, the A7R series for resolution. And then everything now, all the cameras kind of do a little bit of everything pretty well. And they do that one thing really well. And again, mm -hmm. it's all going to end up on your smartphone. <laughs> right. For the most part. Yeah. And it, it depends too. You know, you got to, that, that sensor shift technology that you're talking about, Eli. Yeah. That's, that's fantastic for creating yeah. those, those large images, but it does have some weaknesses, like things that move between exposures or between frames. So you're not going to do any, you're not going to use that technology on anything that's fast moving, like a bird or a race car or, or like a silky <laughs> waterfall or that or blowing leaves in the wind on a landscape yeah. or something so you still like sharky was saying you there's it's never i don't know why photographers i've seen this over the decade plus that we've been doing twip photographers always not always but for the most part live in the world of or versus <laughs> and it's like nikon or canon micro four thirds or full frame uh you know lightroom versus capture one raw versus jpeg you know, LED versus strobe, it's always an or, you know, it can never be an and, yeah. and I argue that. Until you buy the lenses, and then <laughs> it's not Nikon right. or well, and, Sony, right. it's Is that, just but Nikon. That's, that's a community thing, right? Like, I can, I can yeah. bond with my Canon buddies. Also known as Stockholm Syndrome, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so, that's yeah, not, digital, that's not, that's not a you know, I have to that's justify my purchase to everyone. So, therefore, my choice was better than yours, and I exactly. must argue it. <laughs> well, and they, and they continue to grab us with that because, because the only thing I can compare when I'm looking at a camera at the store is the numbers on the tag. And this one has more numbers with megapixels after it. And this one has fewer. So this one is, is greater. And but you know what, Levi, explore that a little bit. Cause we, yeah. that's so, it's so appropriate that you had that, you brought that up. Cause people, especially new people coming into photography, they don't know, or right? a lot of people don't know what the difference is between the brands and this and sensor sizes and all this. They just, I think a lot of people just think more numbers is better or larger numbers are better. Yeah. And that future proofs me. So, yeah, you know, exactly. I don't want to buy the obsolescence. I want to buy something that I know is not going to be dead in a year or two. So let me get the most expensive, biggest thing, right? Yeah. Don't buy a Nikon. few people. Yeah. <laughs> Kidding. Oh. Kidding. Few people Kidding. Selling at, at a, at a We've said it before and they're still camera. here. <laughs> I'm sorry, well, Le at, Levi, what'd you say? At the places where you can buy a camera, there are a few people who also know anything beyond the, the numbers on the tag. <laughs> when, yeah, when they go right? train the guys at Best Buy, they teach them the numbers. Here's the comparative stuff. That's we're it. lucky we know mark morris <laughs> exactly exactly uh, do do you have five hundred dollars or do you have three hundred dollars here's your choice yeah. and yeah and this is what yeah. you get for that's it. it yeah and yeah so and and if and you're who lucky do you enough know, to have a store who do you who do you, it's it's the price you know the people say you know you all get the both of you guys get this question right what's the best camera that i should buy i need to go buy a camera which one should i buy right. first question. my my response is always how much money do you have right what are you shooting and do you have any friends that have lenses in a in another system that you could exactly. possibly borrow? Right, that's that's the calculus. And then from those you three, heard about you can triangulate on the exactly. camera they should get. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yep. And, and it's so, kind of goofy too because man. you go like to Costco, for instance, and you can't you get like a Nikon still like a D thirty five hundred, two mm -hmm. lenses, a camera bag, a memory card, and something for like four hundred dollars. And you're not seeing Canon, Nikon, and all the others do that. When are yeah. the Hosco cameras going to come? So people are still buying DSLRs because of the price when they should be buying mirrorless because that's what they really want. Exactly. Yeah, they want to make you, a good how do you They just don't know it. Yeah. How do you, guys, how do, you, how do you school people on this stuff, though? Is it, you, there's, there's the whole instagram and podcaster and youtuber influencers that are out there right mm -hmm. that many of them are sponsored and are uh, or or doing you know promotions and videos for affiliate purposes and all that so how so you may see you know this this great photographer that is sponsored by x brand it's gonna only talk about that brand contractually so and yeah. that brand may be great you know it may solve all your problems it may be great but there's still that little tinge of but he's getting a check in the mail after this how do you yeah. as a new person as a new a person that's reasonably intelligent making a great income wanting to get into photography seeing this this ocean of choice out there and having an influencer that is doing work that you respect seems to be saying okay you need to buy godox lights you need to buy this camera you need to buy yeah. you need to use this kind of software if you want to do the kind of work that i do you know mm -hmm. you're free to buy whatever you want but if you want to do the kind of work i do these are the this is the constellation of stuff that i use how do you guys combat that like yeah, or when, is it when did we become nascar do? Exactly. Right? Here, exactly. Here's the way. I, exactly. Here's the way I look at it. If you're following somebody, you know, on YouTube, and that they, they mostly use a particular kind of camera, and they use Godox lighting or whatever, Photix, whatever brand, and it works for them, and you connect with them on that level where you're like actually learning, and you've got the money then it doesn't really matter if there's all these other companies out there because right. really you're only going to buy one camera. You're going to buy a lens or two at first. If it works for you, you can afford it. You know how to use it. You're connecting with that person. That's all you yeah. need. Just be, like, I think especially since like COVID and then just getting, oh, I turned 50 in January. Oh, wow. Well, welcome. Know, I'm waiting for you. A friend of friend is like, I've been in the 50s for Are a while, my friend. Like, like, you're like this, you're this timeless fellow who... I can't tell how old you are ever. It's true. <laughs>
<laughs> I was born in the in the the wonderful year uh, before COVID of 1967. Oh, wow. right. BC, that makes wow. me 53. Is that BC? Yeah, B uh, yeah, BC. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was born in 1967, so I'm 53. <laughs> yeah. I've got some you know, great in my beard. I keep this beard I on. I got just some, so too. I, just so I can come to the table. Look at that. It's showing up. Don't, right don't see how young I look, um, actually. <laughs> yeah. Old, my friends. How did we get on age? I don't know. I somehow missed Anyways. That. I, I brought it up. Like, I'm 50. You brought oh, it I, up. Here's, what, here's what it is. <laughs> Getting older, I think, and then having kids, and then you've got COVID. And all that kind of stuff you get, especially after COVID, you're like, maybe things though, I think that mattered before. And I think we're still kind of processing that. And we'll probably maybe a year or two down the road, it'll really sink in like what we've had to deal with and inconveniences and deaths and all that stuff, whatever works for you, whatever makes you happy. If you're going to buy, like, you know, they sponsor my show, but I used Fujifilm before I, something mm -hmm. about that just camera system just resonates with me because I'm old. Because I grew up with yeah. cameras that looked like that and operated like that. It just makes sense to me. We were talking about the Nikon D700. I still have mine. Levi just bought one again. It's a great camera. Whether it looks great or how does it make you feel? Does it inspire you to get out and take photos? Yeah, that's it. Then that's, that's it right there. Whatever, yep. whatever makes you happy. That's what I'm all about these days. Whatever makes you happy, as long as it doesn't negatively affect somebody else, do that thing because life is short. Yeah. Be happy. Yeah. In my first four years as a as a digital photographer, as a photographer, <clears throat> I owned like 27 DSLRs. And I think that's what people should do. You should buy them on, on, on Craigslist. You can get a T3i for 150 bucks. And then in six months, you can sell a T3i for 150 bucks. And yeah. so when you if you if you buy a tool on Craigslist, you're borrowing it. And you can borrow it for a while and then turn it around and try something else and, and get yeah. your, get your fingers on a lot Such of just life. Things. Right. That's, yeah. that's the, that's, that's earth. And we're just borrowing everything. Right. <laughs> Until we're, we're temporary, you know, right. 60, 70, 80 year custodians of yep. certain stuff. And then we give it to the next people. I yeah. remember, you know, we, you guys were talking about, uh, or we were talking about influencer influencing. Right. And I'm a victim of that. I remember, <laughs> You know, when, when I got out of the Air Force, I was in the Air Force for, for eight years as a combat photojournalist. And when I got out, Air Force is all Nikon back then. I don't know if they still are, but they were all Nikon. <clears throat> and of course, I was dyed in the wool, marinated in Nikon. Everything was black and yellow, right? It was so, part of your uniform, man. You could. It was, yeah, that. exactly. I was like, if black it ain't, and, yellow, and, and yellow, it was battle tested, yellow. right? Nikon. Man. Yeah, I dropped a Nikon. <laughs> Uh, in eight thousand eight, I forget what, or in eight hundred one, out of one. a helicopter, <laughs> out of a helicopter, <laughs> hovering above some eucalyptus trees at Vandenberg Air Force Base, and it hit the ground. We landed the helicopter. I ran over, got my camera. The lens had come off, but the camera was fine. I put another. The film was gone, obviously. The film door popped open. This was pre-digital. Film door popped open. Lens came off. Put another roll of film in. Put another uh lens on it and kept shooting took off kept shooting no light leaks no nothing so but i say all that to say as I, when i got out of course i was i had to buy my own gear and i'm looking for stuff of course i'm looking at nikon first because that's what i know um and i think this was man what I, I i hope i'm getting the years right because i'm old sharky uh the this was around the time i think joe mcnally was was he's i think he still is sponsored by nagon but he was talking about multiple sb you know strobes. he was i, I remember yeah. the, this video or article of <laughs> joe lighting an entire plane right. with a yeah. bunch of like SB. 80 sb yes 800s. and i was like 28 i'm sold yeah. man and those things <laughs> talk to each other wirelessly and then i'm getting that you know and if yeah. it's good enough for joe mcnally it's good enough for me so i ended up with a bunch of sb strobes many of which yep. i never even used but me i too. bought them yeah, yeah, because of Joe McNally, you yeah, know, and the absolutely. weight the weight of his recommendation and the authenticity of his recommendation and the proof in the pudding, looking at his mm -hmm. work that I can only dream of doing work at that level. I'm like, you know what? If I'm gonna if I'm gonna, you know, yeah. get into this game, I'm gonna get big shoes to fill. And that's what I did. Yeah. So and and at that time, interestingly, it was significant it actually was better. Like Canon yeah. could not do that. Yeah. 
True. I mean, yeah, that's, that's all right. it was. It was Canon and Nikon. And Canon flashes could not do that, could not perform those functions at that yeah. time. And yeah. I mean, maybe that's where we, we've, we've just passed that time in the mirrorless side of things where, you know, unfortunately Nikon didn't keep up. So they weren't the guy who could still do it. But, you know, now yeah. there's things that certain cameras can do that other cameras just cannot do. Um, Nikon's doing some cool stuff now, though. I mean, I'm that, excited that to see that new, that new Z9. And, yeah. and since since I'm an or I'm no longer an or kind of guy, Frederick, I'm just going to I'm going to tell my boss that the department needs, you know, one of each. You got to you got to know, you know, you got to know the other side, man. I'm telling you. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, bring, bring it. Bring us bring us back to the sensors. Let's 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 talk something on topic for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You guys brought me on. You know, I'm a rat hole guy. You brought me oh, on. No, I, I, I love it. I'm, I'm enjoying Frederick myself. and me <laughs> together, and it's rat hole upon rat hole. <laughs> it's like it's not even a rat hole. It's like looking at the side of an anthill in the glass. Right. You know, Have you ever seen a prairie dog town? It's like a... uh, it's like the sea monkeys. <laughs> what are they doing? What are they doing? They are they talking about cameras yet? Exactly. I see a face. <laughs> well, so what what are some actual differences that you get with a sensor size? Like why? would I actually consider getting a bigger or smaller sensor? Light gathering. We need ability. buzzers. We need buzzers. I want to chime in. <laughs> That's ding, right. Okay, ding, ding, ding. hit it first, Sharky, and then, and then Frederick. <laughs> Light gathering ability, generally, right? The bigger the sensor, the more you can soak up the light. Yeah, well, and like if for the same number of megapixels, you've got bigger sucker uppers, right? Yeah. Bigger photo mm -hmm. sites, bigger pixels that are, you know, supposedly greater quality all else being equal supposedly yeah. so a, you're gonna make some compromises right yeah. that's what photography you know, if, means. if you in greek yeah it means if, compromise yeah, exactly <laughs> it means i can't afford anything else i'm not going to make each this year because <laughs> i need that new z -wear. i can't afford the strobe so i'm available light photographer yeah out there is your uh, uh, uh levi that the for me, like if I look at when I grab for the Micro Four Thirds camera versus versus my phone versus the S1, the full frame camera, the calculus is well, you know, obviously the 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 mirrorless phone is opportunistic. It's with me all the time. I can shoot, share, edit, you know, on the go, and I'm done. But it's you know, arguably the optics aren't as good as the other things. When I go for the full frame. I tend to look at that because of the heft and the weight of that, it's more of considered photography. So it's more of like, okay, if if I'm gonna schedule a shoot and it's models and I don't have another chance to get this shot and I need those I need those pixels or I feel like I want, maybe I don't need them, but I want the, the pixel insurance mm -hmm. of having more to work with when I get into the Lightroom or Capture One or something, then I'm gonna get the best that, what I feel like is the best gear that I have. If I'm going, if we're taking a road trip on the weekend, we're going to Yosemite and I have no idea what's going on, but I know I want some better pictures than I feel like I could do with my iPhone. The G9 is going 90% of the time. Oh, yeah. It's G9 all the yeah. time. So it's all about that and, right? It's about, I don't have to make the choice of, I got to pour all my energy into this particular sensor size and make it work for everything that I could possibly do. I could choose, I could like Sharky has the wall in the back. That's what's in my head, right? I'm like, okay, I'm going out on a mission. Cue the A-team music. I need to pull down the gear that I need to make this mission successful and then right. and then go out. That's just for Here me, comes that's the mini how it 14. Works. Yep. I yeah. love it. I love that wall. You need more red in it. <laughs> <laughs> just put up some more gaff tape on there. Sharky. Yes, there you go. <laughs> if we want to. If I uh -oh. send you a TWIP logo, will you put it up there? <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is, so I'm, th this is wall control, wallcontrol.com. Sharky 15, by the way, gets you 15% off. I'm an ambassador for them. <laughs> Are you so, an influencer? <laughs> we're full circle. I, I just happen to, I'm one of those influencers in the wild, except for the wild <laughs> stuff happens right here. But um, this is wall control. And so, you know, a lot of people put tools and stuff on it. A lot of people now, um, so since I, started doing it a lot of people are doing like charging stations and and whatever and how do we get on here oh you can do logos now too they're affiliated oh. with a company that can do low so you could get the twip logo nice if you want to frederick shoot and us give me a link in the chat for that i need that 
I will do that. And it's it's reasonably priced. This is called Ghost White, so it's not um, <laughs> back reflective. to sensor size, Sharky. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> da, da, da. see what go. I mean? Done. See what and I mean? And I put some hole. red in there. Rabbit hole. There's some red. <laughs> There's some red. <laughs> The Photix M200R, another sponsor. Thank you. I've, I've, got, I've got one from Moonkube, a similar one. Yeah. Yeah, they're awesome. Um, it, well, so I have this. I have this idea. Have you guys ever been on a cruise, like a cruise ship? No, never. Not even once. You know what they and are now? Probably especially never. now. <laughs> Not now. <either. laughs> exactly. There was Legionnaires' disease, and maybe you might get dysentery. Now, the COVID and your president might keep you offshore a little longer to die. He's got a fear of pirates, man. I just don't, right. I don't know. <laughs> That's right. Well, so I took a You're cruise. You're going to Somalia. Time. When you, well, okay. Do you have a kitchen in your house? Yeah. So in, in America, I would say that the majority of kitchens have some windows nearby. We've got a kitchen above the sink, right? Or a window above the sink. <laughs> and, and you look out this window and you can see the mountains and you can see the trees and the birds come down and stuff. Uh, but then if you take four steps to the left, you can look out the screen door, out the, the sliding glass door. You know, it's like six yeah. feet wide. It's the exact same view. Yeah. But there is something better about the view through the bigger window. That's true. It, it's, it's different. And yep. you don't have to like crane around, which I, which I compared to possibly using an ultra wide lens to get the same kind of thing. You know, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't have to like mm -hmm. look out the sides of the window. I can sit there and I can use my 300 millimeter lens and get a hundred millimeter field of view with the compression of a, of a 300 millimeter, these kind of things. Yeah. And so I, I do feel like a bigger sensor sometimes, like, especially when you step up to medium format and when you step up to actual medium format, not digital, yeah, medium it's, format, right? Yeah. It's still only barely bigger than, than the, the 24 by 36 full frame. Are we all... Are we all members of the RB67 club? I used to I, have one. You had one. I yep. See all of us. Now. Yeah. I've got one right now. <clears throat> and the RG. It's, it's what, another, another one of those special cameras. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Although I, I shot more with camera. my Pentax 6.7 yeah. with the wood grip. Oh, uh, yeah. Wow. It was, it was a yeah. SLR actually. So. The Bronica. Remember the Bronica? Yes. Oh, yeah. Also a nice one. Oh, yeah. Um, We're old. And so, I don't know. <laughs> <there's>, <laughs> not Levi. There's some back think, in yeah. my day, we used film. <laughs> hey, hey guys, I just turned 40. I'm like a little kid in this room, huh? Uh, yeah. Yeah. We're gonna be oh, gone. Right. You're gonna you're gonna have to talk about us nicely for the next 10 years right. after we die. Back when I was yeah. on Twip with uh Frederick Van Johnson. You yeah. remember that guy? Yeah, I remember him. <laughs> He's still hosting. He died five years ago. He's still hosting. He's still hosting, still hosting. it. <laughs> still hosting. <laughs> Hey, man. Other, AI, other people says AI. other people say rip his says twip <laughs> i like that i need to i need to break up my will now and put some That's more right. words <laughs> no what, what frederick's uh thing's gonna say and now it's time to take that lens cap right yeah exactly or bury it with Off. me yeah That's actually right. no sharkies okay. will say next next no no the sharkies tombstone will have Sponsored by wall control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. It'll be a wall hooks. control panel. Little hooks all over it. Exactly. Flowers on this side, all over the tombstone. <laughs> Roses down here. Look, look at all. Look at all that gaffer tape right there. It's just so. It's handy. I like. Yeah. I'm one of those people, especially the older I get, Frederick. And we're gonna get back to the mirrorless stuff. If I can't see it, it doesn't exist. I'm like a little baby. You take something away from it, it's gone. Yeah, I have to see it. I, I find a, stuff all point. the time. Gear, I know, bad problem. You know, that's a real thing in physics, like, right? Where you know you can't really prove things exist unless they're observed, right? right. That's so true. that's right. true. Well, and so true. here's here's an here's an idea I want to talk about branching off of the the sensor size and the and idea. If I'm gonna yep. have a full frame and a, full, a medium format and a micro four thirds and my my phone, like the phone, the phone is easy, like. You spend a lot of money on this thing. Like this was not yeah. cheap. If you think yeah. about it, and I don't have to think about it. Right, no, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, you spent a bunch of money on it, and you you did it fairly easily, knowing that because you know you're going to use those three cameras on the back, which yeah. I I'm still not in that club, <laughs> and uh, and you know it's going to be worth it to you, yeah. and so you can you can do the same thing for your other cameras. 
what lens would you buy? Like what is, cause I, I rarely change. I've got like two lenses I use all the time. Yeah. I don't need the entire fleet of lenses. Yeah. Yeah. Having, what, having what are those experience. lenses? What, what are the two lenses? I'm curious that you, that you like on my G9, I can make a living with a, with a 42, five. Oh, Noctocron. Yeah. The, I've got the Noctocron. I don't, <laughs> I struggle. Would I buy the Noctocron again now that they've got the one seven? There's a 40, 42517. It's it's hard yeah. to say. My my friend Erin, she she makes her living using the the one seven and oh, okay. has a thousand dollars more in her pocket. But, Is that Aaron from the direct deposit show? It's not. Oh, not it's that. a different Aaron. Oh no, okay. it is that Aaron. Oh yeah, no, yeah. That is yeah. <laughs> oh, it is that Aaron. Okay, cool. Our new show, yeah. our new our new photo focus shows. Yeah. Yep. Homestead, right? Aaron Homestead, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I met her uh, at WPPI. She's awesome. Right, and yeah. and so I, I can make a living with that one, and then add a seven to fourteen in there for some ultra wide action, and I'm I'm golden. And then yeah, I've got a I bonus. Just... I've got the one hundred to four hundred. But yeah. And what do you what do you what do you have on your S one? What's your on what's S1, your main I've got to? the eighty five. I've got the Sigma eighty five one four on there, mm-hmm. which is really big. That's I'd heavy. rather have like a 135 on there. <laughs> That's a heavy yeah. lens. <laughs> it's a heavy lens. Uh, That's a heavy lens. This one, right? This is the, this is the, is this the one the, four? The same one? Yeah. It's a lot of glass. Yeah. Oh, no, you got That's the new beast. one. This is yeah, the, this is this the is new the, one. This is the older one. It yeah, came out like, new one. that came out a month after I bought this one. Levi, we're talking to Frederick Van Johnson. Of course, he's got the latest one. Right, he's the latest and greatest. The loner. Yeah. I have to send back in two weeks. So, <laughs> well, so so I use that one a ton on the S one, and then I also use I use the seventy to two hundred a lot, um, mm-hmm. which is enormous. Yeah, one should I, have a seventy to two hundred, even if it's an F four version on yeah. a full frame. Yep, it's such yeah. a great. It's just but I use it two hundred like, all the time, so I'd rather have a a two hundred plus. So does that you have a 200 F2? You guys, exactly. I don't know if this applies to all all genres of photography, but I know it applies in the wedding, the wedding world. The holy trinity of lenses, right? Was the 7200, the yeah. what was 24 it? To 70. 24 to 70. 24 to 70. And yep. then the what was the other one? 24. Well, you could get the 12, but but more like a fast 50 would be like the the 51. Yeah, oh yeah, you got to throw that 50 the 50 8. fixed yeah. in there too. Right, the fast. And on the that, Canon side, the 16 water? to 35. <laughs> exactly. The 16 to 35 would be Right, that's there. the one I was thinking of. Yeah. For me it never did. I bought this I bought the 24 to 70 three times. And <clears throat> wow. I sold it every time because I never used it. It's just not it's not how I view the world. Like when I yeah. when I look through this 85 and keep one eye open, things are exactly the same. Like I could walk around yeah. with this in front of my eye and not trip on stuff. It's the same view that I have of the world. Like things are the same size. It's in yeah. like, they call the, the 50 a normal lens, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of people say that's because it's the way the world actually looks. It's not. It's the lens that normally shipped with cameras. <laughs> that's, that's the fact. Like that's the lens they shipped with cameras since 1946. And so, yeah, it's a... At some point on this show, you guys have to do a uh, maybe a discussion. Hopefully, you don't have to, but I would love it if you did a discussion on lenses, OEM lenses versus third-party mm. lenses like Sigma yeah. and Tamron versus your OEM, yeah. you know, Lumix. <laughs> Time or... out. Time out. You notice the, you, myself, no one ever mentions Tokina. <laughs> I've got a, actually. Here's a Tokina. Tokina. Right here. Exactly. Yeah. Would you say Rokinon? Rokinon? Yeah, what? Exactly. <laughs> Tokina. We're old enough Tokina. to remember back in the day. We remember Tamron. Yeah. You remember Tokina, Absolutely. right? But for some reason, Tokina just never kind of. Maybe just in the Americas, which, just which never kind of. Because this like this Tokina Ultra Wide is is a good one. That eleven to twenty two. Yeah. yeah. That they've had. And you can eleven to sixteen now, but not a lot of people know that a Tamron OEMs lenses for most oh, of the for other everybody yeah you know, oh, know that. Yeah. yeah so like the yeah Nikon so if you're shooting and zooms and yeah, yeah if Canon. you're shooting a particular brand that you think might be nikon it might be a tamron actually it probably is yeah it probably is they have so many patents and they they oem a lot of stuff yeah you know what i learned so, i so <laughs> i have this i have the sigma lens because i'm um interviewing the sig one of the representatives from sigma 
Um, and we did our pre-interview, Shark, you know, how, you know, the pre-interviews. So I did our pre-interview and we're sort of talking about the directions of the interview. And I'm arguably, I, I am an, uh, I think I'm the perfect person, one of the perfect people to do this interview because I've never owned a third party lens. I've never purchased one. It's oh, wow. always been, it goes back to that Stockholm syndrome of if it ain't, you know, I, if I'm going to yeah. spend this money, much money on something, I'm going to get something that was made for this other thing that I spent this much money on. And I'm going to, you know, I don't want to have to worry about, you know, it's better on this or worse on that. I just want, just give me the same thing with the same logo on it. Yeah. But I got to tell you, my mind was was shifted when I got this 85 and talking to the, the to the uh, to the Sigma rep, I had no idea of the history of that company and the artisanship that goes into their lenses. And just it, I mean, it's it's a whole documentary on how these lenses are birthed talking to those guys. And one of the cool things that's kind of appropriate to this conversation that I didn't know was I brought up kind of like the, I use Godox strobes. And the reason that I use Godox strobes is because this controller, if I should decide to move the Sony or whatever someday in the future, I can buy another controller and all my lights work, right? right. I don't, it's not a Nikon, it's not a Lumix yeah. or what, it's, it's third party. And I was telling him, I was like, yeah, and the lenses, I wish lenses were like that, where I could take yeah. my lens and wow. move it to another, yeah. you know, yeah. it turns out glass and light are the same. Why, why does the mount, you know? And he was like, well, they do have a program. Sigma has a program where you can send your lenses in and have them change the damn mount for you. I had no yeah. idea. That that How did you not know that? Yeah. I don't it's know, because I don't know any of those lenses. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, that might oh, and, be it. You know, one other I use all the time right now is uh, Frederick that you might like from Sigma <clears throat> is the the 45 to 8. Mm. I wish it was a little brighter but it's it's a it's an L mount lens and it is amazingly sharp. I just did a panorama in the basketball stadium here and like from across the room I can like it's a huge room, you know, it's a it's a college stadium, it's quite large. From all the way across the stadium, when I zoom in, I can read Mountain Dew on the side of the can inside the refrigerator, like the clear front refrigerator from all the way across, like the, the vending That's machine. Crazy. Thing. It's it's a you remarkable thing. That's yeah. crazy. And so, well, I so wish John, I had these things. And I know Frederick will back me up to this when he was a photojournalist serving our country versus me serving myself for a paycheck, right? <laughs> Just <laughs> Nods to you. I'll never Somebody's got to pay the taxes. To pay different different Some... routes to the same goal, right? That's different true. routes. <laughs> different routes to the same destroyed knees, back, <laughs> neck, and all that kind of stuff, right? But yeah. um, I don't even remember where I was going now. Where was, what were we talking about? You were saying something about how amazing I am and how privileged you feel to yeah. be in the same Zoom with me, true. something like that. <laughs> true. It was, uh, it's always that, Frederick. It's always that. I don't remember what I was saying. Oh, I know what I was saying. The stuff we have now available to us, if I had that in my, I left my photojournalism career in August of 2013, which now, granted, was a lot, almost eight years ago. That's crazy. If I had this kind of technology then, my photos would be so much better. No, but my job would have been more enjoyable, I think. You have more tools available now. There's yeah. more things you can do with less, perhaps. Yeah. You know, even and just- you would have made better pictures faster. Your probably have gotten better faster but just being able like i would i would shoot uh, the average uh high school gym with well yeah about the average i'd shoot iso 6400 on my d700 and i'd be using my 7200 and i you can't do this everywhere but i convinced the refs to allow me to use flash so long as i pointed it upward mm. at the ceiling which granted was way up there and not going to really be that useful but i had the gary fong light sphere oh. which is good for you know, convincing the, the Fong Dong, yes, the, those people, convincing the Fong people Dong, that you're a pro, convincing people, <laughs> no, no, convincing people that my uh, flash is my SP 900 is still pointed at the ceiling, and oh, therefore yeah. that's okay. I would get just enough front fill as they were driving towards the hoop to make a better photograph than just shooting ISO 6400. Now you can shoot. 12,800, 25,600. You're, you're just swimming in ISO yeah. all day long. It, it, it's crazy. It's magic to me. Doing. It's That's just amazing. Like, 
And it's that Arthur C. Clarke, you know, indistinguishable from magic stuff, you know, from a True. from a dyed in the wool film shooter. We were just, you know, we had refrigerators full of film in the military. We we're like, oh, look at all this Kodak and Fuji film. Uh, to, and we had to pick the right one for whatever the thing we were trying to shoot, right? So, yeah. oh, it's nighttime, or it may transition from day to night. So I need 100 and I might want some 3200, depending, because I can't not come back with the image. That's the mission. And you were back yeah. rolling. Yeah. And then wrote, yeah. loading that again when you needed to shoot night, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But now, you know, it's, it's now <laughs> that you can roll your ISO or put auto ISO, that's just like magic to people that were shooting shooting film. And to your point, Shargi, I was, you know, when if you go back in time to back in the film days, when we were the feedback loop, I call it, of shooting a photo, when you're learning photography, of shooting a photo and then figuring out what you did right or wrong on that photo could be days, maybe right. sometimes longer. And now that seconds, you know, because you shoot it, oh crap, I'm out of focus. Oh crap, I did this. Oh crap, mm -hmm. you know. You can fix that and you learn to be a competent photographer much quicker with the assist of AI and, and amazing focus and all these other things. We were manually focusing on film back then and all that stuff is no longer necessary. So I think the result of it is we have a lot, that's why photography is a, such a fast growing hobby. We've got, a, we've got many more usable pictures. If you got, mm -hmm. Levi, you may not be old enough to remember this, but there used to be this concept of the picture drawer in, in the kitchen where you yeah. open the drawer, oh, yeah. it's just a bunch of pictures, a bunch Absolutely. of undeveloped film and pictures. There's like 12 in there. pictures from my childhood. Yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, you got 12 more than I do. But you look at that drawer, it's like, oh, here's a roll of film. Let's develop it. Oh, look, three of them came out, right? It came out, was a phrase. Right. You know, yeah. it means something different today, but back then it meant, you know, the photos, the photos came out great. You know, I got some usable ones on there. Now that's all, it doesn't matter because every, almost every photo you take, you know, is, is pretty much a keeper. Now it's down to mm -hmm. composition and story and the stuff that really matters versus yeah. the technical stuff getting in the way. So there's no excuse for closed eyes. No, yeah, exactly. Well, you know, there's some software that can fix that for that's you now. Right. That's right. <laughs> Easily fix it too. Like not even a problem. <laughs> All right, guys, wrap wrap it up for me here. What uh, what is is one thing you would impart about sensor size, Sharky? What do you got? I'd say these days it mostly doesn't matter unless you're doing something specific that needs a larger sensor. Like you and I talked yesterday. You're looking at a photo on your phone or maybe your laptop. You really don't see the difference. When you get to medium format, you really, people still don't know, but they know that something's different, you know? Right. But so just get the camera that makes you happy. And uh, if it's a Fuji film. <laughs> <laughs> you have to All say right, that. Frederick, you don't want to <laughs> No, buy the camera that just make that resonates with you that, you know, do your research, maybe don't buy into a company that might not be around in a few years. Yeah. Don't know who that would be. I'm just yeah. saying, you know, and because well, why <laughs> just why do that? And these days buy mirrorless. Why would you buy a DSLR? And, yeah. you know, if you want to, I, I still have my Nikon D850 and I need to sell it. You know, it's just sitting around collecting dust. It's a great camera. It's the probably the best Nike, probably one of probably the best DSLR ever made. Yeah, probably. And I, you know, I don't use it, and it's not because Fujifilm sponsors my show. It's because I just, when I'm grabbing for a camera, I'm thinking making images. I'm thinking that I'm not thinking DSLR, because that has all the benefits. Right. You know, and so why buy into an old system and DSLR sales are down, mirrorless sales are up. That's not changing anytime soon. Yeah. Why would you buy a DSLR these days? I mean, you can, that's fine. Some people go against the grain like that. Because they're available on Craigslist right now. That's why. Exactly. And there's going to be more that's of them point. soon. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot yeah. of them out there and, and lenses as well. So, you know, the, you have to make the case. You have to be able to afford it. You have to know what you want. Do some research. Don't just you're at Costco and be like, well, that's a great deal. I'm going to buy that one. Cause I hear that all the time too. And people are like, why did I do that? I volunteer. At I bought you two actually. lenses or whatever, $400. And it's not mirrorless. I, I stand in the camera section and educate people 
take a break every now and then, get some samples, come back, educate some more folks. <laughs> nice, very nice. Do that. Um, can I can I get my thoughts? I would, yes, please. I would say, and this may be heresy, but I would say the <clears throat> don't don't think about sensor size. Um, I would I would caution people to not get caught in that little eddy of sensor sizes and brands and you know all that stuff. And the analogy I use I use for people is the if you go into a five star restaurant you know in some major city and you have a great meal, the only people that care about the knives and the kitchen utensils and the stoves and all that stuff that it that went into making that meal are other chefs. They don't, they're the only people that care because they want to try to make that meal too. They're like, this was a fantastic whatever. I want to try to make this. How did he make this? So they care about dissecting how it was made. So that goes into their enjoyment of that meal. Same with photography. The only people that care about how you made a particular photo are other photographers who arguably are not your audience unless you're an influencer or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're a photographer, you're shooting for non-photographers. They don't give a crap about what it took to get that shot. So stop obsessing about the stuff and instead concentrate on your, your vision and the story of the thing that you're trying to communicate. We're in 2021 and we can, you know, tell all kinds of stories and get them out to gazillions, untold numbers of people in minutes, right? So figure out what your story is, whether it's you want to do some photojournalistic or political expose on something, or you want to skew more fantasy, or you want to build your own cinematic universe and shoot, you know, fictional dioramas inside of that. So figure out what that is and go create it, right? And then if you hit a wall where, man, I, if, if I could animate this piece better, if I had a camera that could shoot at this resolution, then consider going to get a camera that could shoot that resolution and fix that. You're not, people, think they should be Batman. Sorry, Shark. You Shark, I'm looking at your background there. People, people think they should be Batman and have it's a bat cave so that they can be ready for any particular situation that the bad guys throw at them and they have their utility belt and they can say, okay, I need this. So, you know, it's not that. You, it's the reverse of that. It's the story first and then you backfill it with the tools you need to create that story to capture the light in the best way possible in service of that story. Sensor size doesn't really matter. I mean, you could do so much with just these things, right? So if this is all you have, shoot with this until you hit a wall and you need to upgrade, then upgrade. So that would be my my advice. Hit and always, wall. always hit and, wall. not or, always and. Yeah, always and, and Frederick, and, and Frederick, when a new body comes out, the next iteration yours, what are you thinking? I know what I'm thinking, what are you thinking? Um, what, you like, know, like if they come out like a new version of the S, there's a bunch of iterations yeah. of this one. Already. What's the what's the, what's the push for like? Do I really want to drop another grand or two or whatever the the delta, as you say? Love that. Yeah, I do say that a lot. The delta, yes, you the do. Deltas. What are the deltas? Do? I sound like a big Frederick Van Johnson fan. <laughs> I right love now. it. And I am. I love that. I'm FBJ. immortal now. Right. <laughs> I will live on in Sharky. <laughs> but what you know? What are you thinking? Like this justifies the purchase especially these days where a lot of people have you know had income issues and stuff because of COVID and all that what's going to get you to buy that next camera in the yeah. in the iteration i'm not talking about like buying a, something else different in the line i'm talking about that next one the iteration going from the xt3 to xt4 or whatever yeah, I think I think it comes down to if will it let me do something that I don't already that I can't do with what I have? Like if there's is like I was talking about that wall, is there something is there something that I, I have a burning desire to do that that camera's new feature will solve for me that will save me all this time or energy or whatever, then yeah, it makes sense. But in the end, you know, depending on your perspective, the earth is what 4.3 billion years old and light has not changed much hitting the planet, right? Light, the speed of light and the physics and the, all that stuff about light has not changed in all that time. The tools have changed, they've gotten better, but the physics of light haven't changed. So as far as I'm concerned, even my cheapest camera, even my film cameras, there are people that have done work with, you know, cameras that, that my current crop of cameras look like extreme science fiction to, right? They've done work with those pedestrian cameras that I could never even hope to approach doing, 
right? Ansel Adams and, you know, all these Cartier Brisson, all these people that are just doing all this crazy work with next to nothing. And we have supercomputers that can almost take the photo for us and we're still complaining and looking for more features on top of that. And not, you know, those guys were like, image hunters, right? They're going out looking for the image. And if it's this particular image, I need this weapon to capture that image, right? So that's what I would want to get back to. Um, I have gear lust and gear acquisition syndrome, like the best of them, like, you know, Insta360 just came out with their new thing yesterday. So I'm lusting after that. Do I need it? The calculus was I have an old Insta360 camera, old, that I barely shot two two 360s with in a year do i really want the other one now even though the video looks amazing so the new one's so sweet <laughs> i, I want to be way. iron man with a camera on my chest you know i'm just saying <laughs> that's right so i don't know i don't know if that answers your question sharky but i i think i you know for me and i'm not trying to sound holier than thou or anything but like my the cameras that i have like the manuals, I can open up the camera for this S1 or even the G9, I can open up the manual and see stuff in there like, oh, wow, I didn't know this camera could do that. <laughs> Let yeah. me play around with that feature for a while, right? But instead of buying another camera that does even more amazing stuff that I'll never get to. So I don't know, yeah. So you answered it. That's basically what I think. Like, is, is there something in there that's gonna help me do something I can't do now yeah. or can't do easily? Or, you know, like I said, we're getting old. You know, just, may, I just want to be happy, you know? Yeah. You're I just want to have fun. I got the fountain of youth. You are getting <laughs> old, my friend. <laughs> you're, you're not. Not untrue. Not untrue. Well, fellas, I sure appreciate you joining me. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited to, to have had some time with you. And, uh, and I'm, I'm grateful for everybody else who joined us, too. We have a webinar just about every week on photofocus.com. So head over to photofocus.com and get on the schedule there and find something to, to interest you and, and help you in your photographic journey. Frederick, where can we find you? You can find me in, well, actually, thisweekinphoto.com. All roads lead to thisweekinphoto.com. That's my podcast. It's the blog. That's our community, all that kind of, all those kinds of things. But I, I'm also doing a brand new show on the Photo Focus Network called, wait for it, Sharky, you may, you may uh, understand this name. It's called The Pixel Punisher. <laughs> so, oh, yes. nice. Yeah. Punishing yeah. Pixels, you talked right? about pun punishing pixels. That's right. Punishing You're darn near. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Yes. And now it's coming to fruition in a Photo Focus show. Nice. We're going to talk about all things pixel punishing. So post-processing, editing, special effects, light painting, all that kind of cool stuff. It'll be fun. You're swimming out of network now. You're like, well, hey, those photo focus guys are kind of. Hey. Thanks, Frederick. We're nice. excited for that. Cool. Uh, Sharky, where can we catch cool up with you? Let's go to lenshark.com. Don't forget the two S's in the two middle S's. there. Yeah. I'm not Len Shark. I'm not responsible for what that guy says or does. Lenshark.com. Excellent. You'll find everything there. Well, thank you both so much. Uh, my name is Levi Sim, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye.